In today's installment of Washington Legal Foundation's Legally Brief, Clifford Sloan, a partner in the Washington, D.C. office of the law firm Skadden Arps, will assess a federal district court's ruling in the Viacom versus YouTube litigation. Mr. Sloan represented WLF Pro Bono in an amicus brief it filed in the case in support of Viacom. Viacom versus YouTube is an important case about the future of digital media and the protection of creative content in the online world. Judge Stanton's recent opinion, in my view, is erroneous and deeply troubling. But the good news is that the case and the issues are now headed to the Court of Appeals for resolution. Viacom alleged that YouTube built its business on a business model of copyright infringement in which users illegally posted many thousands of infringing videos and YouTube knowingly drew a large audience from this rampant infringement. In discovery, Viacom unearthed powerful evidence supporting its position. And even Judge Stanton, in his opinion, recognized that a jury could find that YouTube, quote, welcomed copyright infringing videos. Viacom sent YouTube notices about many infringing videos and YouTube took down the videos uh, that were listed in the notice. But it was like a game of whack-a-mole. For every infringing video taken down, dozens more infringing videos popped up. YouTube maintained that as long as it took down videos in response to specific notices, it was completely immune from liability under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or the DMCA. Judge Stanton agreed with YouTube. He drew a distinction between what he called general knowledge of copyright infringement, which he said does not give rise to copyright liability, and knowledge of specific instances of copyright infringement. He said that as long as an entity responds to notices with takedowns, it is immune from liability. I think there are serious errors in Judge Stanton's opinion, and I'll highlight three. First, actual knowledge. The DMCA requires that if an entity has actual knowledge of copyright infringement, it must take appropriate action or it loses immunity. This is a completely separate and distinct provision from the provision about notice and takedown. But Judge Stanton's opinion collapses the two provisions. He says that actual knowledge means knowledge from a specific notice and he effectively eliminates actual knowledge as a separate requirement in the DMCA. Second, red flags knowledge. In still another provision, the DMCA requires that if an entity has what is called red flags knowledge, it must take appropriate action or it loses immunity. Under the statute, red flags knowledge is awareness of, quote, facts and circumstances from which infringing activity is apparent. But here, too, as with actual knowledge, Judge Stanton's opinion collapses the provision. He requires a specific notice in order to have uh, red flags knowledge, and he effectively eliminates red flags knowledge as a separate requirement from notice and takedown. Third, in my opinion, Judge Stanton's decision is, at the very least, in serious tension with the Supreme Court's decision on inducement liability in Grokster. In Grokster, of course, the Supreme Court emphasized that inducement of copyright infringement gives rise to contributory liability. Under Judge Stanton's opinion, however, in this context, Grokster is completely eviscerated because notice and takedown provide complete immunity. I believe that Judge Stanton's opinion conflicts with the language of the DMCA. But it also conflicts with the primary purpose of the DMCA, which was to provide effective tools to combat online piracy. The legislative history in 1998 of the DMCA is replete with examples of congressmen and senators emphasizing the importance of this anti-piracy goal. But ironically, Judge Stanton's opinion converts this piracy-combating legislation into a license for piracy as long as notice and takedown are complied with. Again, this is an important case for the future of digital media and the protection of creative works in the online environment. We all look forward to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit's careful consideration of these important issues.